Currently, Alberta environment and parks biologists are investigating the potential of Prussian carp being located in four Edmonton area ponds. So because we're finding them in multiple locations, we suspect that humans are probably the vector that are moving them. Uh, so taking them out in a bucket and wanting a, another angling experience closer to home and moving them around. There is a growing sense of frustration that some folks are just not understanding the risk they're placing our native fish species at when Prussian carp are moved from one water body to another. Well, we have some pretty hefty fines we already have in place if anybody's introducing fish from a, another water body to a new one. It's actually a $100,000 fine, so it's fairly substantial that we're trying to deter this, this activity, but uh, it still seems to be happening without us being able to detect it. But there are fines in place. You need to kill them before you leave the body of water. If you're found in possession of a live Prussian carp, you can be charged as well. Being able to eradicate Prussian carp in a closed off water body is much easier than trying to deal with them within a river system. Yeah, so we, we're standing in front of a stormwater management pond that's not intended for fish, so it's not supposed to have fish. So we have options of using rotenone, which is a, a pesticide that uh, just targets fish. It actually stops them from breathing. And so in a situation like this where there's no other fish that would be um, killed in our efforts, we could launch a response effort using that product. In a natural river system with other fish, uh, we cannot separate the Prussian carp from our natives, so we would lose all fish in any response effort. So options are limited, but the situation does provide a new angling opportunity. And that's really why we've landed on the catch and kill. We're trying to get anglers to help us in, in any chance that they're given to remove some of the population to do that. Um, we fully recognize though that that's not gonna be fully effective in removing an entire population because they do re reproduce so prolifically. Um, but it at least is some response in removing a pop some of the population. If this trend of moving carp out of one river system in favor of another continues, the future of our native fish species is not all that bright. Prussian carp are really set up to dominate in any location that they get introduced. And we're, we're seeing major impacts. Uh, we suspect that Blood Indian Reservoir was maybe one of the first introductions. And they are seeing populations of native fish start to crash. And with it, their tourism industry is actually crashing around it as well. So we're looking to maybe partner up and, and have a huge removal effort. Uh, the best time is in the spring. They actually congregate and that's when we get most of our Prussian carp reports of new locations because they do congregate and group together and get more attention that way. So we're exploring that right now. So how do we curb this invasion? We're, we're hoping a little bit more education might help folks. Um, they, they think that their impacts of moving these fish around is, is no impact to the, the native fish, but we want to really dispel that myth and show that that's not the case. We are losing our native fish to these invasive fish that are being introduced.